a terabyte, which as I said, I mean, you know, you buy for, you know, say, well, you say uh, $200, maybe it's 500 you know, but it costs nothing. But it can contain, you know, the text which is in uh, one million books. Uh, the entire U.S. Library of Congress is about 10, maybe a bit more, say, 20 terabytes. So you can store the entire U.S. Library of Congress, you know, with less than $1,000, and, and so forth. So, and also those data are in first approximation stored on the internet. So, an interesting overall societal uh, approach is once you put all the stuff on the internet, what is going to happen in 50 years? I mean, I had a very interesting discussion, actually in Latin America, I was talking with uh, the director of the Genomic Institute in Sao Paulo and a very fantastic scientist, Mayana Zatz, and I was telling Mayana, uh, you know, what do you do for all those data that you record, etc. I say, oh, I have no problem, I put it on DVD. I say, then and what? Well, I put DVD, you know, here in my cupboard, it's all under control. I say, yeah, but how long do you expect the DVD to be readable? I say, oh, well, DVD, well, well forever. Forever? Well, five years, ten years at the maximum guaranteed time of the storage of a DVD. And what do you do afterwards? And imagine now all those libraries that are digitizing their books, putting on, on, on the web, and then somehow being less careful about the long-term preservation. I mean, we can still today read ancient codes uh, of 4,000 years before Christ that they were very intelligent copying four different pieces of stones uh, in, uh, in Mesopotamia and put at the four corners of a temple. So at that time, they had the idea of having multiple copies, 4,000 years before Christ. We can still, if you know, you know how to read the cuneiform, you can still read that information because there are four copies, so in some area you know, where, where the information is not any longer readable, you have uh, three other chances. So that is still readable. 6,000 years later, what are the chances to read a DVD container, of, you know, very important you know, medical discovery, medical information, 6,000 years from now? Your guess is good as mine. So there is a tremendous amount of technology challenge for us, for us, the computer developers, the computer scientists, to try to see how we can preserve those gigantic gigantic amount of this static, I guess, gigantic uh, amount of data that is now all produced digital. So, so that, I think, is going to have tremendous societal implication, and I have no, no, no answer. I mean, you know, my guess is as good as yours. So, let me now conclude, because I don't think that I have that much time left. Ten minutes. Ten minutes, fantastic. Okay. So, you know, I can relax. Um, such a networking, it seems to be a kind of mundane um, issue, but I really think that social networking is again changing the way in which we, we interact among humans. So there are very, you know, silly way, you know, and you see, I mean, social uh, computing is not that new. I mean, there is a lot of examples, you know, uh, you can have fun and follow this timeline, but basically, uh, and you see, I mean, it starts all the way back to 97. So it's nothing new over the sun in general in computing, many other things. So if you want to have fun and you look for me on, on Facebook, you will discover there are many Fabrizio Gagliardi. So you're not obliged to pick me. You can pick any other, but it's probably better than me. Anyway, uh, such a computing, again, made for fun, just to make friends, you know, fine, you know, you know, nice, you know, nice companion, whatever. But what is... Uh, um, very interesting is the potential use they can do for other things. I was reading on, uh, in my last time in Latin America before this trip, I was in Colombia, and I was reading an article there explaining that uh, sometimes it's here, I think, or, you know, I think it's sometimes it's here, because I was in Colombia uh, in, in August. So maybe in the first part of this year, the people in Colombia decided they had enough with violence, well, they had enough with violence for quite some time. So they wanted to make a demonstration against any kind of violence, not necessarily just the FARC, but also the, vi the violence you know, coming from the opposite political direction, etc. And because it was not a political movement, there was no way to organize 100,000 of people you know, descending in the street of Bogota. It was now with Facebook. With Facebook, 
people, ordinary people, had the chance to communicate among themselves and go out in the street, 100,000 people protesting violence from any kind of direction. That is definitely an example of an impact of technology and computers on the society. I don't know what is the result of that large manifestation, but probably a considerable one. I don't need, you know, we are now just coming out from the election in the United States. Everybody has read of the important component of internet in the success of Obama Barack. There are even colleagues in the States say without internet, the result has been probably been quite different. So you see, internet and social computing, uh, social networking are now so, you know, influential in everybody's life to affect the election of the most, you know, powerful uh, country in the world. So those are examples where, again, I'm not sure if I'm definitely positive or negative, but definitely there is an impact. And, you know, I'm happy to discuss the implication with you. And, you know, I'm not sure that we all have the same, you know, in, in, ten, I, in general, I tend to be very positive and very happy about those impact. But, you know, it's clear that there are also concerns. Uh, YouTube, well, you know, same thing, you know, YouTube, you can actually, you know, put up, uh, you know, images, you can become your own uh, producer yourself. Um, to my personal life of a very common individual, I'm traveling almost all the time, and my daughter decided to buy a horse. So in normal circumstances, yeah, it's complicated. I didn't want you know, to buy a horse that is going to cost you know, a, a, a gigantic amount of money for the rest of my life without seeing the horse. So what they did, they took the horse, they jumped around uh, you know, a, a, a jumping course, and they put it on YouTube. They sent me the, the link, and I could check the horse and eventually say, okay, go ahead and buy it. And now they're happy with this horse. So, so imagine that only 10 years ago, no way, impossible. So even my modest, you know, uh, common life is affected by, you know, this kind of social computing at, at a greater extent because, you know, I can tell you I'm going to be, you know, paying, you know, big bills for the rest of my life. So definitely it's going to affect my life. Now, going to more serious thing because you can live without horses. Uh, 23 me, you know, you probably know what 23 me is, is a smart idea of Sergey Brin's wife, you know, uh, uh, the poor lady got a little bit bored uh, just being the, the wife of Sergey Brin. So she decided to uh, get uh, quite a bit of money from Sergey and invest in, in, in this, which is a very, very smart idea. So it's the idea that you offer the people the possibility to uh, put their personal genomics, you know, you take a sample, you send the sample, and for uh, a small, you know, few hundred dollars, I think now it's down to a uh, 399, yes, that, that's what you get. Uh, 399, I checked a few days ago, is still the price. So basically, you know, uh, from your saliva, you can get, you know, uh, the genetic uh, uh, information about your genes, and then you put it there, and then, you know, you can 